Today we're building a $13,000 computer. In this computer, we're demonstrating Intel's sixth generation processor, an i7, which has 44 PCI Express lanes. Prepare the system by removing any components that came from the manufacturer. In this case, this Antec case has quite a few accessories that need to be removed. Some of them are secured with zip ties. Now you can prepare the backplane for the actual hard drive chassis. Use a Phillips screwdriver and install four screws to secure the backplane to the hard drive caddy. Prepare your hard drive, remove it from the static bag, and then install it in the toolless hard drive caddy. Repeat the same process for each tray for each section of the computer's case. Test the drive fitting by installing it in one slot and then remove it for later when we reinstall the chassis back inside the case. Remove the components from the box, separate them, and then identify which ones you will need for various parts of the install. The instruction manual will help you with any parts of the process that you do not understand. We are using a Corsair Obsidian Series 900D case. It is a full-size ATX tower with lots of room for upgrade. The current case has its stock fans. We are going to swap them out for a higher model that has better cooling capability and may last a little longer. These fans have color accessory rings. I'm swapping them out to match so that way the case has a little bit of style. Use a Phillips screwdriver to install the new fans. You can access them from the front of the case. Be sure to orient the fans correctly with the power cable associated with the right direction so that way it's aesthetically correct. Orient the case in a fashion so it's easy for you to install the drives. We're starting with a couple storage drives, and then we are going to install the entire array of HGST Helium drives for the RAID 5 array. Each of these drives should be installed in a fashion where it's easy to identify them. Here is an HGST drive right here. Now that you have the drives installed, it's time to install the power supply. We're using a Corsair AX1200i digital power supply. Check the power supply manual if you have any trouble identifying the cabling. 
We're going to unwrap each cable and prepare it so it's easy to install inside the chassis. Remove the plastic packaging and be sure to take off all the plastic stickers hiding any of the logos. Orient the power supply inside the case with the correct screw placement. Use the four Phillips screws included, which match the color of the case, and install your power supply. Now we're going to install the Blu-ray drive. It's a five and a quarter inch drive. We're going to use the top slot, but leave one space for the fan controller. Now we can install the Corsair water cooler. This is a sealed unit, the Corsair H110i GT. Review the owner's manual so you can match the specifications to your CPU and motherboard. We need to replace the fans that come with the cooler. These aren't adequate. We're replacing them with some Noctua, and we're setting up a push-pull setup which requires additional hardware. We're using stainless steel screws purchased from a local hardware store, and the four Noctua pulse width modulation fans. Now that the fans are prepared, it's time to align your screws and hardware together so that way you have a successful installation when holding the radiator at the top of the case. The fans' power cables need to be oriented in a fashion that makes it easy to route them at the top of the case as well. And make sure you have the direction of the airflow correct with the push-pull configuration setup. Always roughly seat the hardware, but never over tighten it. This is a radiator and you can damage it by not installing the hardware correctly. In this case, I'm using an assistant to mount the radiator correctly. This makes it much easier so you can install the washers with the screws correctly and not over tighten them. Now I'm going to install the five and a quarter inch fan controller. This one will be located right below the Blu-ray. This fan controller offers many options, RPM, RPM display, and functionality. This USB controller provides additional support and eSATA. And finally, per the customer request, another set of USB 3.0 connectors. Always read the instruction manual with any of these controllers so you can get everything set correctly that matches with the display. Now I'm going to size up the front bezel to ensure that all the components fit correctly and the cabling will be managed easily. I'm going to install some of these power management cables from third parties just to help with the look and aesthetic in addition to cooling flow. These LEDs will provide ambient light Prepare all of the cabling to make it easy for you when you install them into the case. Just as the instructions noted, make sure you match up the fan controllers to their respected ports. Always follow instructions when mounting any hardware inside the computer that is not typical. Match fan port 1 to controller port 1. Because the case is so large, I'm using extension connectors to accommodate for the fans. Now that everything's set, secure all of the five and a quarter inch faces in place.
This all-in-one card reader and USB controller has an eSATA port. Configure all of the cabling necessary and then add it to the five and a quarter inch slot, accommodating the rest of the drive space. Now that you've connected your fans to the controller, firmly secure all the screws for the radiator to the top of the case. We can begin installing the rest of the ATX cabling. At this point, I unshielded the heat sink for the CPU. I connect a power extension cable to the rest of the ATX cabling so that way it accommodates the space for the large case. Now we can begin to install the motherboard into the computer. Unpack the motherboard and verify all the components that you need are ready to go. Install each component carefully as you will need to take this very seriously because you can heavily damage the motherboard when installing a CPU. Verify the mounting holes on the motherboard, verify the serial ATA cabling, and then Use the accessories supplied and mount that as well. This is a USB 3.1 card. Verify that your computer has enough lanes with the processor in order to accommodate all of the PCI Express slots being utilized. Some of the features will be turned off such as the rear facing USB ports when using all of these lanes. After verifying all the components and checking the motherboard, now we install our i7 processor. Verify the processor is intact, take it out of its packaging, and take the sticker and set it aside for later. Carefully remove the CPU cover and then install your CPU into its socket accordingly. This is your backplate. Use this backplate to install on the computer before you mount the motherboard. Now we're going to install the 64 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. This is a matched set, so be sure to install them in the order that they were removed from the package. Now match the DIMMs to their respected slots. Before installing each DIMM, remove the plastic protective film on each module. These memory modules come with a fan controller, which will cool the modules during high temperature use. Prepare the fans and then once that's complete, verify that they fit on top of the modules before you install it into the case. After you completed the memory, we're going to prepare our video card. This one you need to install a backplate that does not come with the video card. We're going to demonstrate doing that first before we install the video card to the actual motherboard in the case. This video card is an EVGA Titan X. 
This card is a high performance graphics card, which will offer you many versatile options from CAD to gaming. The card has multiple connection ports on the back for you to use different display types. Follow the instructions and remove the plastic protective cover on the plate. Remove any adhesive strips that are needed and all the screws on the previous set on the video card. Set everything aside and prepare the case so you can mount the motherboard. All the stands need to be measured exactly to fit the motherboard. Carefully fit the motherboard in place and then secure the screws, but do not tighten them at first. Verify that the back plane is lined up and everything is in place that then you may begin to tighten each screw. Now we're going to mount the CPU heatsink. Install the standoffs to the motherboard and then carefully install the heatsink itself. Tighten the screws one at a time from corner to corner. Now it's time for some extra cable management. Prepare your serial ATA cables and any additional cabling necessary for data connectivity. Prepare your power cabling so it's easy to install later. Also prepare any other LEDs that you need to mount to the case. Route any cabling necessary so aesthetics is clean on the front but can be routed easily in the back. Continue to route the cabling accordingly. Be sure not to damage any cabling and install them in a fashion that they can be removed easily later. This particular setup has a RAID controller, so I'm going to install the RAID controller's serial attached storage cabling. The cabling is not long enough, so I'm using this serial ATA coupler to accommodate the length of the chassis. These are power extension cables. Install them to route the cabling so it's clean. In this case, I also am installing a PC computer speaker. This buzzer will let you know when the computer has completed its power on self test. Continue routing your cabling around the back of the case. When you are installing your power cabling, make sure you note the side of each cable will denote if it's a PCI Express cable or if it's the motherboard 12 volt power cable. Now I'm going to install all of the serial ATA power cabling first and then begin to work my way down.
Now we can accommodate the spaces for all of our accessory cards. Remove each back plane and then install the cards one at a time, starting with the video card. Now we can connect the actual motherboard's front panel connectors. They'll come from the bottom and usually be on the right side of the motherboard. Now I'm going to connect the video card's power connectors. These are the temperature sensors. I'm going to install them now. Now I'm going to install the Intel PCI Express solid state drive. Next card to install is the LSI RAID controller. This also has a battery backup that we are adding to it. Prepare the RAID controller card with the cache battery backup card, so that way when you install it in the case it will accommodate the battery that comes with it. Connect the SAS connector of the LSI cabling to the serial ATA drives. Bring the breakout cables through the back and connect it to the RAID card. In this case we are also installing an eSATA backplane connector. Connect that as well right now. Clean up any necessary cabling that's left behind as you begin to organize the final stages of dressing the front side of the case. Now we can begin finalizing all of the cabling in the back of the case. Start with each group one by one and secure them so that way the back of the case can still be closed securely without bending. Remember, neatness counts. It also makes it easier to identify cabling later should there be an issue.
As you continue to dress in the cabling, make sure everything is secured, but also functional. Do not have any cabling bent past 90 degrees, nor do you want it sticking out so the case cannot close. Now from the front side of the case, secure any remaining sensors or cabling that was left behind. This is the final stage so neatness counts. I'm adding extra LED lighting and adding extra power cabling to accommodate additional power requirements. After you've secured the back of the case, verify everything in the front is securely tightened and functional. Begin placing all of the final pieces in place such as the Intel sticker on the front. It's time to boot the computer. Get your accessories ready. Let's see if this computer posts. I have a Windows USB installer, UEFI. Now that the computer is posting, verify all the fans are running. First thing to do is go into the BIOS and update the BIOS to the latest firmware. Now I'm manually adjusting the fan controllers up front so that I can respectively get the temperatures I want for configuration. After the BIOS update is complete, verify that you are running the XMP profile on the memory. That will ensure the slight overclock and give you the performance that you paid for for each DIMM. After you configure the memory with XMP, run a full memory test several passes to ensure that it's stable. Once you're sure that the passes have completed successfully, you can now install Windows. Skip the product key and format the unpartitioned space that you have created. Install Windows and wait till you get to any prompts from Microsoft. After that, let Windows update itself, then you can begin to install drivers. In this case, I'm installing Windows 8 first because of a digital entitlement license. Then I will upgrade to Windows 10. After completing all of the drivers and activation of Windows, use the Windows 10 upgrade utility at this time to upgrade to Windows 10. Verify that Windows has remained activated and then install any additional drivers that were necessary. 
I'm now going to install Microsoft Office on this computer. After Office is activated, now install the updated video card driver. Since there are new drivers available, I'm going to install them now. Each motherboard has different drivers. Some of them you can use the latest version from the manufacturer, such as Intel. I'm going to install the Intel RAID controller driver with Intel Rapid Storage technology. You can view the status of your attached hard drives and other storage devices from the Intel Rapid Storage technology program. Now it's time to install the LSI RAID controller driver. It has its own program and its own driver. Most of the time this will not come from Windows Update. Once you've installed that, you can log into the management for the RAID controller and view all of the online disks and their status. And thank you again for watching.